What's up, everybody? My name is Scott Waters, and welcome to New Life to Metal. Going to be doing a rock metal update. That's right, going to do a rock metal update. Going to do two rock metal updates today. I'm going to do a 12 inch update, and then I'm going to do a separate 7 inch update. I've just kind of been in a 7 inch mood and looking for and collecting and buying a lot of 7 inch so I've got a big pile of those but I've also got some 12 inch stuff here that I've been collecting and I'm going to do that first right now I'm going to start off with some live stuff I've got uh, three three two or three excellent three three excellent bootlegs here that are live albums that are just fantastic that I've picked up in the last few months but uh, this is BBC in concert and more 1972 budgie so one of the first wave of British heavy metal bands um, I love budgie especially the early stuff you know the early 70s stuff and this is very well recorded, so you've got uh, basically uh, what one, two, three, four songs recorded on the BBC in '72, and then three songs recorded live uh, at the John Peel show in '72. In case anybody's wondering what's playing in the background, because I always get that question and I never remember, um, I am playing Entropy, Ashen Existence. This is Canadian thrash metal band. Good stuff. So, all right, next up. Alive in Winterland, January 1975. Of course, Winterland being San Francisco, California. Uh, classic Kiss. Uh, good sounding bootleg. This company, uh, Verve, I believe it is. Um, everything I've picked up from on this Verve label has been fantastic sound quality. I mean, it's it, it, some of it's as good as some of the you know actual official albums. Uh, some of it's you know quality bootleg material where you wouldn't say it's official but nothing is poor and unlistenable so uh, and they always have these kind of cool collages on the back of, of the bands from the time period and that's what you got going on with this Kiss album too uh, so anyhow fantastic Kiss bootlegs 75 and this one as well uh, is on the same label the, Ver the Verney that's what it is Verney label uh, this is UFO live uh, at the Electric Ballroom Atlanta USA 1974 um, again, early early UFO, one of the first wave of British heavy metal bands, and a fantastic live set featuring, of course, Michael Shanker and, and Pete Way, who we've since lost, and the awesome Phil Mogg on vocals. So, great band, great release. Uh, I picked those up at Rockadrome if anybody's interested. Uh, it's, the UFO I actually missed out on the first round, and I, I just put on Rockadrome, hey, send me an email when you get more, and they got more, and I jumped on it. So. All right, next up, some more live stuff here. Um, let's see. I've got another bootleg mixed in here, too, but I'll show it later. Um, here is Voivod, Lost Machine. I finally got around to grabbing the live album from them. Uh, double album set featuring, um, you know, a, a pretty... I mean, these guys have, what, 20 albums out? <laughs> so they've got a lot to choose from. So got a little bit of everything on here. Uh, I got new stuff like Post Society, but you've got older stuff, too, on here like Voivod. Uh, and their cover of Astronomy B. Dovane, which of course is just superb. Um, so yeah, it's a good, it's a good, uh, a good mix of, of stuff, and the sound quality is great. It's a very good live album. I'm just a fan of live albums to begin with, uh, you know, especially bands like that I love, like Voivod. Uh, good stuff, worth worth checking out. Okay, this one I've had for a while, and I just keep putting off showing it. Um, it's been shown a lot on YouTube, but this is the Kiss. Official bootleg off the soundboard, Tokyo 2001, featuring Paul Stanley, Ace Freely, Gene Simmons, and Eric Singer on drums. Um, this is actually very good sound quality, really good performance. Um, I don't know if it was doctored at all. I, I, I mean, the rumor is that it was not. So, uh, good set list. And let's see if I can scoot over a little bit so I can get the whole album in there. Uh, so, we got on here Detroit Rock City, Deuce. Shout it out loud, talk to me, which is really cool because that's, I mean, that's not a song you hear them play loud live much. I Love It Loud, Firehouse, Do You Love Me, Calling Dr. Love, Heaven's on Fire, Let Me Go Rock and Roll, Shock Me, Guitar Solo, Psycho Circus, Lick It Up, Bass Solo, God of Thunder, Drum Solo, uh, Cold Gin, 100,000 Years, Love Gun, I Still Love You, Black Diamond, I Was Made for Loving You, and Rock and Roll All Night. Uh, I This thing, I pre-ordered it direct from the band. I bought the black vinyl version. There's all these different colors you can get. I don't really care about colors. I just wanted the set. A lot of people complained about the packaging. I think it's kind of cool. It's printed on actual cardboard stock, brown cardboard stock, and then it's got three albums, each in their own individual um, sleeves. 
and it, it's, it's made to look like a bootleg. So you've, this, this is actually the back cover. Here's the front cover. <laughs> so you've got the, the, the date of the show, um, the songs, the... I, I think it's kind of cool packaging. Yeah, I know it's not, you know, Kiss is normal thing. Kiss usually has, you know, tons of photographs of themselves and all the other kind of stuff. I don't know, regardless, I thought it was kind of a cool idea, a cool way to package um, this kind of stuff. It's not like there's not enough photos of Kiss floating around and everything, so... Um, yeah, comes in a you know, little box. Yeah, I'll put it in there later. Struggling with it. <laughs> All right, next up, um, some thrash metal, some heavy metal. This 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 rock metal up is going to be all over the place because uh, I just gotten some weird moods over the last month or so where I was listening to and buying stuff that was not my normal listening. You know, just stuff I don't want to listen to. So, but I did manage to grab a copy of this. Um, a buddy of mine from Germany, uh, vocalist from the band Repent, uh, Jürgen Allmann, sent me uh, some records inside. It was the cover for this, uh, and I realized I didn't have it on vinyl, so I went looking for a copy. I ended up finding that the cover he sent me was a repressing. I ended up finding a copy on Profile, Rock Hotel Records, um, an original pressing uh, that was still sealed for uh, well under twenty dollars. So I was kind of shocked. Uh, so yeah, I snatched that, snatched that up. I think it was like sixteen ninety nine. Um, and it's perfect. I mean, I always worry about old stock vinyl when it's sealed being warped, but this one was perfect, so glad to have it. Uh, obviously, you know, one of the big three, a Teutonic Thrash, um, along with Sodom and Creator. I would add Accuser to that list. Some people would probably add Tankard, which I wouldn't argue with, but... Next up, Razor, just one that I was missing. Uh, scored, a final, uh, scored a copy of Malicious Intent on vinyl. Um, so very cool. This is a repressing. Um, let's see, uh, 2019 Unidisc pressing of Malicious Intent, Canadian thrash metal classic. If, if you don't know Razor, you're probably not into, you know, really into thrash metal because they are just one of the defining bands of, of the sound. Um, I also have another one of their albums coming in the mail. Their second unreleased second album. They recorded an album right after Armed and Dangerous that apparently was never released and it just got released on High Roller and I found a company in the U.S. selling it so I jumped on a copy of that because I've had problems ordering direct from High Roller for some reason in Germany. But All right, next up, EP, Grave Digger. This is uh, Ballad of Mary. Didn't even notice it was released on vinyl. Thanks to Steve Harmless Rebel for uh, letting me know. Uh, I was able to manage, I was able to get a copy even though I wasn't able to pre-order it and, and get it for that price. I ended up getting it for a fair price. Uh, off of Discogs, so um, it's basically what five, six songs. So you got the Ballad of Mary featuring Doro on vocals. You got Rebellion featuring um, Hansi Curse uh, of Blind Guardian, and then you've got the Ballad of Mary, uh, the acoustic unplugged version, also featuring Doro. You've got the High, uh, Highland, uh, Highland Farewell, the instrumental version, and Coming Home, the instrumental version. So that's what you get on this thing. Uh, this thing was released on CD years ago, and it just finally got released on Jolly Rogers Records, I believe. Yeah, Jolly Rogers Records, licensed from Napalm Records. So, cool to finally have that on CD, I mean on vinyl. I, I'm pretty sure I got everything Gravedigger has released on vinyl, on vinyl. <laughs> um, even the, the hard-to-find stuff. I've just been lucky enough to, you know, to pre-order a lot of this. So. All right, now we're going to get into some stuff that's a bit outside of the norm for me. Um, although I do have one more that I will get into. The new Iron Maiden. Um, uh, so, what do you think of the new Iron Maiden? I think the new Iron Maiden is good. I enjoyed it. I like it better than the last album. I played it two or three times already, and I, I have it on CD and vinyl. Uh, unfortunately, this CD version is getting sent back. I ordered this from Amazon. I pre-ordered it, and they sent it in a big, giant box. I mean, a huge box with no packing inside of it. Nothing. Not a single thing. They just threw the record in there. It, and it was, it's just beat the crap. It's got uh, bends here, bends here. Uh, it's just, it's bent in here. I don't know how well that, that'll show on there, but for such an expensive record, I mean, this is a huge bench here. You can, you can really see that one. Uh, no way, no way of that. I'm, I'm not gonna get away with that. So I've asked them to send me a new copy and I'm waiting to send this one back till the new one arrives in good shape. Uh, hopefully it does. I, I don't understand it. Sometimes they get stuff from Amazon and it's perfectly packed. You know, they'll have it in a record box and inside a box, which is great. This one was just flop, flopping around in a gigantic box, which was severely crushed when it was sitting on my doorstep. 
and yeah, anyhow, enough complaining about them. I, I will say this, I have this sitting right here. I got, the very next day I got this that I ordered from Amazon in the mail. It's a little batteries from my key fob from my car. And I needed two new batteries, so I ordered this thing. This thing was in this nice box with all kinds of packing around it, stuffed full of stuff, and on the very bottom of the box was this. Why is this in a, all packed up nice and, 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 and special, and then something expensive and fragile like this is just thrown in a box and shipped? I don't get it. Anyhow, three record set, really nice packaging. I mean, you definitely can't complain about the packaging on this thing. Uh, musically, I enjoyed it, but I, I do think, once again, um, some of these bands, I, I kind of wish they would bring in some outside producers um, to tell them, hey, that's a bit too long. Hey, uh, maybe we should cut that song. Because I think this could have been a fantastic album if it wasn't so freaking long. Um, man, save some of the f tracks and put them on an EP down the road or something. Uh, because it just tends to get, I don't want to say boring. It doesn't get boring. It just gets tiring after a while to listen to. Uh, a lot of people are calling this prog rock. I, I don't call it prog rock. It's just... It's just, it's slightly progressive. It's just melodic, hard rock, heavy metal. And now if you're looking for early Maiden, it ain't nothing like, you know, uh, Number of the Beast on here. There's, there's no screaming vocals. There's no fast tracks. There's definitely nothing, you know, with a punk ethic like you heard on the, uh, Iron Maiden or Killers. Uh, this is definitely sticking into what they've been doing the last few years. Kind of melodic, um, slightly progressive, hard rock. Uh, but like I said, very enjoyable. I th like the fact that they didn't, Every song isn't just the name of the, the song repeated over and over again for the chorus. Um, they put a bit more thought into the songwriting, I think, and I quite enjoyed it. So, good album from Maiden. Um, hopefully I get a better copy in the mail soon from, from Amazon. Alright, now we're getting into some of the stuff that's a bit outside the norm for me. Uh, I was listening to a lot of um, Southern Rock stuff. And so that's what these next few are. They're all Southern Rock. So, here's another bootleg. Um, this is, I don't know if it's a bootleg or not, because I have a feeling it is. But anyhow, it's on, this is on Parachute Records. It's uh, actually two shows on two records. So you got Chicago 1980 and Hollywood 1983. Um, and the sound quality on both is spectacular. They're both radio broadcasts. Um, I really enjoyed this, uh, but I'm a huge Blackfoot fan. For me, when I think of Southern Rock, my first thoughts are, you know, Leonard Skinner, obviously, Molly Hatchet, and Blackfoot. Those are just the band, my go-to first bands. Um, but... I just started stretching out and listening to a lot more stuff besides that, you know, stuff like the Outlaws, um, and just the stuff that kind of pushes less towards the hard rock and heavy metal, which Blackfoot definitely pushes more towards that, and Molly Hatchet as well. Uh, I mean, I have a quote from Dwayne Al uh, Dwayne, Dwayne Allman, <laughs> from, um, ah, I forgot his name because I said that, the guitar player from Molly Hatchet saying, hey, we were trying to mix Southern Rock with heavy metal, that was our thing, you know. Um, so that's kind of what Blackfoot did as well. but. I started getting into some of the other some of the other stuff too, and I I picked this up, which is just something I didn't have, which was kind of unusual. I so I grabbed this. It's a it's a radio promo for Fly Away and Good Morning, one of my favorite Blackfoot songs. Uh, cool cover. It's got a little cut in the corner. I'm assuming because it, it was a promo. Uh, this was definitely a used copy, as you can see. It's got a, a date on here, KFM Radio, and uh, but the record's in great shape. The cover's not in bad shape considering how old it is and, and what it is, but I've never even seen it before, so kind of a cool collector's item. I gave it a listen once. It, it's more of a collector's thing than anything else. But then uh, I also was working on a job for a record label and they told me to check out Ed Ratzloff. So I might be letting a cat out of a bag. So, but originally these Ed Ratzloffs are going to be coming out on, on, on CD. Uh, but anyhow, so I, I picked up this album. It was not cheap. Um, very hard to come by the second Ed Ratzloff album. Um, but Ed Ratzloff is, was the guitar player for a band called Blue Jug. Now, who's Blue Jug? I didn't know either. This is Blue Jug. Southern rock band. They were on the Capricorn label. They had two albums out. They toured with Almond Brothers, Charlie Daniels Band, and Leonard Skinner. Um, they were one of those bands that were set to become one of the next big bands in the 70s. I believe this is their... I can't remember. They have two albums. I can't remember. If this is a, I think it's their first album. Um, this is 1975. I think in 76 they were yet set to sign a big label contract. I don't know with what label it was. I read something online that it might have been MCA and that Skinner might have had a hand in that. I, I don't know if 100% if that's true or not. I can't always believe what you read online. But uh, Ed Ratzloff is the main guitar player and one of the vocalists in the band. So there, that's how that came about. So Ed Ratzloff, apparently during the whatever meeting was happening with the with the record label and their management in the band, 
he didn't like something um, because he was a Christian and he said, nope, if I can't do it for God, I'm not doing it at all. Tore up his contract and walked out of the room and that was the end of Blue Jug. Um, so, like I said, only put out two albums, Southern Rock, pushing less towards the hard rock side of things, more towards the country rock side of things, but really, really good albums. So if you can find a copy of this, I found this copy in good shape for relatively cheap. If you're into Southern Rock, check out Blue Jug. I mean, right along the same lines as the Allman Brothers or like the Outlaws and that sort of thing. Uh, Pure Prairie League, you know, it's got that kind of vibe to it. So good stuff, Blue Jug. And likewise, Ed Ratzloff. This is his second album. I have his first album sitting here too, I think. Yes, I do. Um, I enjoy this one as well. I think the first, this, this, this was his first album. This was his second album. First album is a little more harder rocking. And when I say that, Again, it's not heavy like Blackfoot. It's just got more of a hard rock song. This is a little more acoustic, a little more... I don't know. It's still a great album. Really good, uh, just southern rock. Uh, very much uh, has gospel lyrics, though, so if, if that's not your thing, then it's not your thing. But if, if, if you don't mind the gospel lyrics, really good. Great album cover, too. So, Ed Ratzloff. And then, uh, finally, um, this is a band that a friend of mine that I worked with for 27 years at uh, a printing company. Uh, my friend Rob, he turned me on to this band, and I've had them on my computer forever at Starline, and, you know, I just play stuff on the computer while I was at work, and uh, this is a band that played often, and now that I've been working from home and running my own company for a couple years, I just didn't have it, so I found a good copy of the, the Winter Brothers band. Again, this is pushing more towards the country rock side of things. Um, it, you know, like I said, the Outlaws, Pure Prairie League, uh, that, that sort of vibe, you know, the Allman Brothers, uh, not Molly Hatchet or Blackfoot. Uh, there is some Skinner vibe here and there. Obviously, Skinner were a huge influence on most of the Southern Rock fans. But uh, this is, I believe, was, this was their second album. This would have been 1977 or 78. But man, check out that band photo. If that's not Southern Rock, then I don't know what is. <laughs> Those are just some good old boys right there. And uh, I, re I really enjoyed this record as well. Um, I'm going to keep an eye out for the other albums too. Now, I'll tell you one thing, finding a good copy of this where the cover wasn't completely erect, I mean, just most of the copies I saw online, major ring wear, major destruction to the covers. This one was in really good shape with the exception of uh, it is a promo copy, so it's got a little cut in the corner. I don't mind a little cut in the corner because it's, it's really clean. The vinyl's clean, the record's clean, and I'm really glad to have it. So there you go. That is my rock and metal update for, uh, what are we in? What month are we in now? September 2021 uh, and I appreciate y'all watching leave a comment below I always try to get back to everybody and I definitely appreciate the comments and the, the back and forth that we all have so that's it thanks for watching God bless stay strong